Yo, this came out looking so fire. I can't believe this. This is insane. Holy shit. We shot this. We really made this. It's finally launched. I'm finally allowed to talk about this campaign shoot that I did in Los Angeles with Gymshark. All right, I'm just gonna get like nice and uh, uncomfortable over here. I'm really old, so I really don't really sit on the floor. Yeah, so if you came to this video thinking that uh, I'm the newest Gymshark athlete, uh, I hate to tell you that Santa Claus isn't real, but uh, yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not nearly as in shape as some of the other guys. I'm not super strong, and uh, I don't really have that many followers on social media, but uh, I got signed by Gymshark in a different capacity, and that was actually doing the cinematography for one of their ad campaigns. So now that that's launched, I can uh, I can finally talk about it, and I could say that I did it, I could say things about it, and. Uh, it went really cool and it was a really dope experience. So you guys might be asking because again, I don't really have that big of a following. Uh, I'm not a well-known cinematographer in the fitness space around YouTube and probably even any other social platform. And had I land a job with a company that's as big as Gymshark and it's, it's a fairly large company. So uh, I'm gonna tell you that story today. So stay tuned. Uh, so a couple months ago, I had done a trip to Miami. Now, if you guys aren't aware, I do all of uh, Will Tennyson's videos. I've been shooting with them for, for quite a while now. It's been almost like a year. So uh, we have an anniversary coming up. And uh, we had a trip to Miami, Florida, where we were gonna do a Gymshark meetup. So there was a bunch of other athletes there. We stayed in this really big house in, uh, in Florida. And there was a bunch of other things that we had to do. There was a bunch of content we were gonna get. We shot a bunch of videos. And uh, there was like a strength challenge, which was super cool, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. And uh, your boy, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyways, if you guys don't understand that joke, just watch the video and come right back. Um, but yeah, so I've, we were doing that and uh, it went really well. And there was a bunch of comments on the video. It was a two million view video, I think, up at this point. And uh, there was a couple of like comments of like, like you, they should sign you or, or whatever the case is. And I'm like, <laughs> um, based on the fact that I think I'm like a quadruple X, um, I'm not in shape enough to actually, you know, wear their clothes, but I do like the stuff. It's really nice. Shout out to Gymshark. Um, but one of the comments I commented back was, uh, I'm not a fitness channel as you guys could obviously tell, but if there was an opportunity to shoot in, in Canada, uh, I would love to take up that because I do do cinematography in the fitness space. I mean, it's only been a couple of years, but uh, I would love that opportunity. So I was joking. Uh, I wasn't exactly being entirely serious. And uh, I'm assuming that the people at head office in Gymshark had other plans because a few months later, uh, actually a few weeks later, uh, I got this message and uh, it was really cool because um, at first, I thought it was fake, to be completely honest, because I didn't know particularly who the person was. And generally, I get weary when uh, people say Kai instead of KY, because in every video, I tell you that it's KY, not Kai the Creative. Um, but I don't fault this person, because my initials are actually K and Y, which is my first and my last name. So, uh, fun fact there. But I didn't know uh, particularly who the person was at the time, so I had asked a bunch of athletes, but I then realized that all of the athletes that I know are Canadian, um, so I didn't necessarily get an answer from them because they might have not known who the person was at the time. Uh, so I decided to ask one of the athlete managers that I met on the Miami trip. And then uh, he let me know that that was the the lead producer for Gymshark in the UK. So she works in the head office in uh, in Europe and I should probably answer that. And it's not just another crypto scam. So. Uh, Needless to say, I uh, I wiped the egg off my face and I answered that message. And a couple calls later, I was booked on a flight to go and shoot in Los Angeles with uh, with Steve Cook, which is super dope because I don't think he knows this. But um, when I started shooting fitness content in like the one show that I did like five years ago, uh, that was a channel and a person that I watched a lot. So it was a kind of a weird, like really cool full circle thing. But basically, I was uh, booked on a trip to go to Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, the shoot was super dope. It was really good. Um, if you guys want to see kind of the finished product or at least one of the finished products, um, I'm either going to play it like right beside over here or like I can leave an Instagram link and you guys can go and watch it there. So it looks really cool. Came out super dope. Uh, we'll talk more about that shoot kind of in another video, another videos actually. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was um, kind of my thought process between the day of the shoot Actually, no, the day of like when I got called and honestly yesterday, the day before the launch date. And um, it's weird. Uh, so I work in a niche, obviously. Fitness isn't necessarily the, the biggest department in terms of people creating content, photography and video and the world. And uh, I find a lot of like real creators or like real filmmakers and photographers kind of look down on that niche uh, for whatever reason. I'm not too sure. And um, 
I also started having a lot of thoughts about like what would encourage a company based in Europe that's like a billion dollars or something like that. Like they make a bajillion amount of, uh, of money. What would um, entice them to call this kid in Toronto who's a little bit green, uh, just in the grand scheme of things and filmmaking and stuff. Um, it's like decent, like I do okay. I do a pretty decent job, I guess. Not necessarily good, not bad, but I do decently. Um, I don't even live in the state that they had me shooting in. So uh, I started thinking about a lot of like imposter th syndrome things like it was like good enough to be there and maybe this is just like a nepotism hire and just because like I know some of the other athletes like this is going to be a, a shoe in in terms of getting a job and bidding and stuff like that and then I realized when I asked like kind of all my friends if um, they knew who messaged me they wasn't really sure so it, it couldn't have been that so I thought maybe I pitched too low and I didn't charge enough money and they just said hey this guy's super cheap so uh, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll run with it and, and hopefully he doesn't figure it out. And, uh, I found out that I was like right in line with exactly what, uh, they were kind of asking the other guys to do. So it wasn't, it wasn't that either. And, um, yeah, I had a lot of thoughts about kind of, maybe I didn't deserve to be there. Um, maybe I didn't deserve to shoot and get that opportunity. And then, uh, the day before the actual, um, the day before the launch campaign, which I think today's Thursday, so yesterday, which is Wednesday, uh, I get this message, and this is from the the person that actually edited it, and you're gonna see him later on in the channel, and uh, that was really cool, and uh, that was really flattering because, like, again, I, I don't really have a big following, uh, I am in a really small niche, so like, if you live in America, which most of my subscribers do, like, you kind of hear whisperings, or like maybe you see me in Will's video sometimes, every now and again, and um, there isn't really a big opportunity for me to kind of flex. The cinematography because we are just we're making a lot of like youtube content and vlogs and stuff like that so um to know that somebody that i didn't know in another country honestly on the other side of the world is uh, is watching the stuff that i'm doing and not just from like a youtube perspective but in terms of like being a dop and cinematography and, and, phot and photography and stuff like that uh the fact that like a company as big as gymshark being like i really like this person's work and uh this is perfect for the type of stuff that we want uh, that was that was really cool and uh, I think at first I didn't give myself uh, enough credit for that one I, I definitely thought that it was just something that yeah because I knew like obviously I know I know well we were like we're really close I mean I seem like every single day or at least every single week um, and one of my other friends Taylor she's also from Toronto I've known her since university so I thought like because of that like that's kind of what got in there but to know that they had other options and they just decided that I was the best one. It was it was something that kind of uh, gave me a newfound confidence. And I mean, that doesn't mean like, I'm not necessarily an unconfident person. Um, I actually feel like, I don't know, I have a pretty good self-esteem, I think. But um, that helped me kind of solidify that what I'm doing is necessarily the right thing to do. I, I constantly have this battle of uh, whether or not the niche that I'm in or the work that I'm doing is good enough to kind of move forward. So. I don't know, getting that call was was kind of important and that was really cool and it was a really cool shooting experience. So we'll talk about that in like a behind the scenes video and stuff like that as well. Um, but the moral of the story, I, I think we've been here long enough, uh, but the moral of the story is, um, it's twofold, is one, if you think you're on a certain path and you're unsure, um, stay on it. And I don't necessarily mean if you are doing things that are self-destructive to continue doing them, but if you're on a path and you're a little bit unsure and you want to kind of uh, kind of take the path of somebody else that you see, whether it be on social media or YouTube channels or anything like that, uh, I would say don't do that. I find that a lot of these bigger gigs uh, that have come up recently have come up around the same time that I decided that I wasn't going to make something to look like another creator. And I also wasn't going to do anything to impress another creator, which is really cool that um, the second I made that decision, other people noticed it and that's the thing that they wanted to kind of involve themselves in and make me a part of in terms of their branding and their ad campaigns and stuff like that. And there are other gigs that uh, we'll talk about later on. And the second thing is just because you know a lot of people, the onus on you to still be good at your craft is still there because you could know, you could have 100, 200,000 followers, but if you're known to not really work hard at the things that you want to do or you're not working hard at your craft and you're not practicing every single day then you just get known by 200,000 people to be a mediocre person um and that's something that i i kind of don't want to have uh, i'd rather have a smaller following that knows me to be very good at what i'm doing than a large following and i'm meh so um i think those two things were two things that i realized that i think those two things are things that i realized that uh 
yeah, that kind of spoke a lot to me. So, uh, yeah, don't try to make stuff for other creators. I know like there's tons of people in the filmmaking space that you look up to. Some people I look up to. Um, and I'm super surprised that like there was like particular creators that I knew were in the area and I asked about and they were like, nope, we picked you instead. And I'm like, okay, that's a lot of, a lot of faith they're putting into me there. But, um, you never know who's watching. You never know who's kind of like watching your stuff. So I don't know, keep, keep at what you're doing. And, um, maybe in a couple years that Jim Shark will call you too. They'll send you a DM and, uh, pronounce your initials as one word and then ship you off to Los Angeles to do a gigantic ad campaign. And, um, yeah, you get to meet Steve Cook, which is super dope because, uh, yeah, I started watching him like when I first started like lifting, uh, outside of football and stuff. So that was kind of a cool thing, but, um, that's the end of the video. It was kind of just a story time and I kind of want this to function as a timestamp. So, uh, this whole channel is not necessarily talk about like gears, tips and tutorials, but it's also something that like I'm 30, uh, in a couple of weeks. And, um, I want to be able to look at this channel when I'm 40 years old and look back at all the cool stuff I did, or maybe show my kids like, Hey, this is what your, your dad did, uh, when he was 30 years old, living in Toronto, uh, at the heels of a pandemic, uh, just kind of figuring it out, uh, as a cinematographer in the fitness industry. So, um, that's kind of what I want this to function as, as a video. That's a kind of a timestamp and, uh, pat myself on the back. So if you know, you guys have done some cool stuff or you just feel like it, pat, pat yourself on the back too. So, um, that's the end of this video. It's kind of running a little bit long of the tooth and my average watch time is going to suffer for this one. Cause I haven't really moved a lot, but, um, I'm out of here. I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm going to go now. And, uh, if you guys want to see more videos and you like, you want to see the behind the scenes video that's coming up, uh, or you want to subscribe and see like other stuff, this was totally supposed to be the day of a a seven four unboxing and it wasn't, um, yeah, click subscribe. Uh, if you want to see other stuff, uh, there's definitely a lot on here. I have a social media page on Instagram. So if you want to see that too, that's cool. Um, and in honor of this being a very Danny Gavertz, uh, type of story time, I love you. <laughs>